Hi, I'm John Kent. I'm a family doctor, and today we're going to talk about the iliopsoas. Uh, or actually, so it's called. It's actually iliacus and the psoas. We'll start off uh, this uh, particular discussion with the psoas muscle, uh, not the iliacus, which you can see right here. The psoas major, in fact, starts from the vertebrae, the vertebrae of L1, 2, 3, and 4, and the uh, in the um, gutter between them at the base of the transverse process. It also starts off from the discs themselves. So all of the orthopods that say that the disc pain is one of the causes of, uh, of the back pains we have, that's true, but it may also be caused by pulling from the psoas muscle on the discs and therefore activating the nerves. The psoas crosses over the major joint, the hip joint, and inserts into the lesser trochanter of the femur. What's interesting about it is the curve that it makes. We don't see that on the, on the uh, AP photographs that we look at, like the pictures from Frank Netter, how it comes from the back and then runs over and actually goes forward, crosses over underneath the ing inguinal ligament, and then inserts into the lesser trochanter of the femur. So its major job, as you can see, is flexion of the hip along with some of the other muscles involved. And we have this nice green point here uh, as a trigger point. And people say, well, how on earth am I going to needle uh, a muscle that's in the middle of our pelvis? We'll get to that in a moment. What's interesting about the psoas muscle is its pain relationships. This referred pain from psoas does not happen in the front. It doesn't happen in the leg. Our pain is felt much further in the back, all the way up to the middle of the thorax, down into the, the butt area. Um, but because it has such a close relationship with all of the nerves coming out from L2, 3, and 4, we also have a lot of uh, pain which can be referred, and also pain which can be referred into the groin, uh, and in fact down into the, uh, the scrotum uh, or into the labii. The, uh, Symptoms of a uh, psoas are usually caused by overload or by strain. The strain is most often caused by stumbling. Uh, somebody, this person catches his right foot uh, even on a small brick on the path and that leg gets left behind, he lunges forward. The psoas is the muscle that's going to get pulled because it forces the hip joint into extension. Um, and so that's the main cause of uh, direct injury. Uh, there's a lot of overuse injuries as well by people who are doing a lot of stair climbing, a lot of climbing up hills. Um, we don't use the psoas for going down, but certainly for going up because uh, after about 45 degrees is the main flexor of the hip joint. At the beginning of, of flexion, of course, we have to remember the rectus femoris muscle, which attaches to right here over the anterior inferior iliac spine and goes down into the knee. Um, but that's another story. Along with the psoas muscle, we have an interesting muscle, the iliacus. The iliacus muscle, or I guess in English it's the iliacus, um, starts from the bowl of the pelvis, the inside of the bowl, and it joins with the psoas muscle tendon to form the conjoined tendon. And we can see here a trigger point, which is actually outside the pelvis, underneath the inguinal ligament as the conjoint tendon goes into the lesser trochanter. And what's interesting about the iliacus muscle is that it is also involved in women's problems when they have pelvic floor problems. And so here's all the pelvic pain that we're going to get from iliacus as well as its referred pain to the front of the body. So it's interesting, we call the muscle iliopsoas, but the psoas muscle in fact, will refer pain back and the iliacus to the front. Um, there is sometimes another small muscle, the psoas minor, and the psoas minor starts up higher from L1, L2, and it will course on top of the psoas major, but it doesn't reach the leg. It inserts into the inguinal ligament, and that um, can have its own problems, but they're very, very similar to the pain pattern of the psoas major. 
So um, the physical examination of the psoas is, is most easily made in the sitting position where you can take your hands and simply put them into the patient's tummy while they're sitting and then ask them to lift their knee. And you'll be able to feel the psoas muscle very easily through all of the abdominal organs. And if, that mu if the muscle is activated from, with a trigger point, it will be very tender. And that will be an indication to needle. The dry needling of uh, the psoas major is actually not all that hard. The approach is actually from the side. The uh, psoas sits immediately in front of latissimus dorsi. And latissimus dorsi originates from the iliac crest, so if you can find that, and all of the erector spiny muscles, they form this big bundle. And if we can find that uh, on the side of the body, the, the we'll say this, the patient is at their back to me, looking towards me. Here's the bundle of the erector spiny. You can slide your hand across onto the front of it, alongside latissimus dorsi, and then find the psoas muscle, and guiding the needle medially, uh, we can meet the psoas muscle without too much difficulty, um, as long as we don't head into a kidney or into uh, some of the major visci of the abdomen. Uh, or into the vena cava or the aorta. Uh, the needling of psoas is one of the uh, muscles that we leave for our advanced dry needling courses, uh, at least with the association that I work with. The, ili the iliacus muscle uh, can be needled um, by um, judiciously going in through the pressing in on the abdomen and then sliding the needle down on the inside of the ilium. Um, so both of these uh, needle techniques uh, are, uh, are possible, but they should be left in, in the hands of a practiced and experienced professional. Um, it is remarkably easy to relax the psoas muscle. Um, we can use, uh, the most easy is probably a counter-strain method. Um, and that has provided a lot of relief to patients immediately. Um, another method would be to, uh, uh, to put a patient in the position that we would use to release a sacroiliac joint, um, say a, a, a posterior pelvic tilt, having the patient lie supine on the table with the, the affected leg hanging off the table and just preventing some elevation or flexion of the leg and then finding the sweet spot and letting the muscle relax through using a muscle energy technique. Um, and that's about it for the iliopsoas. Thank you.